these recordings are for the some of the problems from chapters 4 and 5 and here's just a quick listing on how you should do the problems gather all information from a word problem identify all the physical quantities and in this in these chapters that means the types of forces so for example thrust weight lift friction and so on mass acceleration angle and then there could be one or the other like velocity or acceleration well acceleration is already listed set up Newton's second law the sum of the force vectors equals mass times the acceleration vector and then work off of that one and then you're working off of Newton's second law so here you're gonna plug in thrust, weight, lift, friction, whatever it is on the left hand side and equals mass times acceleration and then you might have to break it up into x and y components because these are vectors and that's also the next couple of things that's what they're about pay attention to the directions of vectors to make a distribution between the positive and, and the negative so a vector that points to the left or a vector component that points to the left would be considered negative my uh, my preference choose theta from theta the angle measured from the positive axis so that cosine always is always um, on the axis and sine always on the y axis and therefore you introduce less confusion if you're totally consistent you will come up with the correct result and you will see that as we go through these problems There's actually an example from the book that says two people are pushing a stalled car. The mass of the car is 1,850 kilograms. One person applies a force of 275 newtons to the car, while the other applies a force of 395 newtons. Both forces are in the same direction. A third force of 560 newtons also acts on the car by the direction opposite to that in which the people are pushing. This force arises because of friction and the extent to which the pavement opposes the motion of the tires. Find the acceleration of the car. So. Um, here I have gathered the information. I call the friction Fs equals negative 560 newtons because it points to the left. And then I call the other two forces, force by person A, 275 newtons, force by person B, 395 newtons. And then, of course, the mass of the car is given. So I'm going to make myself some check marks here. There are three forces that are given. So force A, force B, and the frictional force, the mass is given, and we're supposed to come up with the acceleration. Here's Newton's second law, sum of the force vectors equals mass times acceleration. Because all is one-dimensional, we really don't have to worry about cosine or sine or anything, we're just going to write them down. So we're going to have F A plus F B plus frictional force equals mass times acceleration. Notice that on the left hand side I wrote them down positive just like it says the sum of so plus 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 and for the frictional force the negative will be introduced once you actually plug in the number. I don't want to do it here. I want to keep it as a as a sum and the negative only comes into play when I actually do write the number down. In order to figure out the acceleration, of course, just one, st one algebra step. I better use a nice fraction bar because otherwise mine look kind of bad. So FA plus FB plus FS divided by mass equals and you're going to come up with something as you can see the um, or when you do the calculation you will see that the forces to the right are larger than the force to the left so you do come up with a positive number which should be the case because the car should accelerate to the right because otherwise it wouldn't make sense for them to push on the car This problem says when a 50 gram tennis ball is served, it accelerates from rest to a speed of 45 meters per second. 
that's about well, close to 100 miles an hour, the impact with the racket gives the ball a constant acceleration over a distance of 44 centimeters. What is the magnitude of the net force acting on the ball? So the net force that they're asking about is here exerted by the tennis racket. Yeah, tennis racket on the ball. So we're supposed to figure out that force. Let's see what's given. The mass of the tennis ball, 58 grams. I already write it in standard units. 0 0.0058, oops, kilograms. That's what I meant by standard units. Then what else is given is from rest. So the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. And the final velocity is given as 45 meters per second. And the distance is 44 centimeters, so 0.44 meters. Okay. Let's see what we're supposed to figure out. Well, we're supposed to figure out what the force is. And it says there is only one force acting on it, um, the force of the tennis racket on the ball. So I just put one question mark. There's no other force involved, so no check marks. The mass is given, and the acceleration is actually not given. So here I'm going to have force equals mass times acceleration. Again, this is one-dimensional, so we actually don't need the vectors. I only have one force on the left, but I don't know the acceleration either. Well, what's happening in this case, this problem actually should have at least a star in it because with this information right here, this one, we can figure out the acceleration, but we have to do so from a previous chapter. From chapter 2, if we use one of the equations, which says Vf squared plus, oops, not plus, equals Vo squared plus 2a x, it says there, but I'm going to use a d here for distance. And that one, let me look it up, is equation 2.9. So here you have to figure out, huh, acceleration isn't given, but I need it in order to calculate the force. So what do I do? Well, I use the other information that is given and remember what I did in a previous chapter. And oh yeah, with this kind of information, I can figure out what the acceleration is. So a equals. Okay, this fraction bar doesn't look too good. V f squared minus v o squared. This one actually turns out to be zero. So, Vf squared minus 0 divided by 2d. Overall, that's a positive number, so we come up with positive acceleration. It doesn't say so in the, in the problem, but here, the way the photo indicates is let's choose it to the right, so we do come up with a positive um, acceleration. Actually, it is indicated in the in the problem because it says that the velocity is positive, so it should go to the right. And now that we have the acceleration, we go down here and plug in mass times acceleration, and again you're going to come up with a positive force in newtons.